Hello and welcome to today's video. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to be doing parametric equations today. Uh, everything including finding intersection points, finding Cartesian equations, finding domain and range, how to differentiate, how to integrate. We're doing everything. How to sketch. We're doing everything with parametric equations. Hopefully the video is not too long. Please give it a like and subscribe down below. It really helps the channel out. Let's get into the video. So, the first thing we need to know is how to get a Cartesian equation from uh, the parametric equations. So, a parametric equation it is basically x and y in terms of a third variable. So, in this question, it's t. Uh, they give you clearly the range of t. It's between negative 3 and 3. And they want us to get the Cartesian equation, which basically means eliminate t. y in terms of x. No t is involved. So, it's as simple as uh, simultaneous equations. So if x equals 2t, then t equals x over 2. Now I'm going to substitute that t into y. So that's going to give me x over 2 all squared. Let's just expand that. And that's going to give me x squared over 4. This is my Cartesian equation. That is part A. It's not got any T's. So that's why it's a Cartesian equation. Okay. State the domain and the range of f of x. Now, there's two ways to do this. If you know how to find the domain of range of the function like this, then you can do that. Um, but you've got to keep in mind the parameters of t. So, what I would do is since x equals 2t, then I want the limits of 2t. So, that would be 6 and negative 6, and that's x. So, this gives us our domain. Domain is always x, range is always y. So now I need to find what y can go between. Now you might think, what can t squared go between? Now, if t is 3, then the upper bound can be 9, right? But if I square negative uh, 3, then I'm going to get 9 as well. So what's the lower bound here? Well, what's the smallest t squared can be in this range? And the answer is 0. That's when t is 0. So this is my range. So that is how you find your domain and range. You're trying to find it in terms of x and y, or f of x. Uh, now we're going to get into sketching. So with sketching, if you recognize the f of x or the Cartesian equation, you can sketch it like that. We're going to go into more detail later how you do it if you don't recognize the Cartesian equation. And often you won't, because with parametric equations, the, Car the Cartesian equation will be stuff we're not used to seeing. Um, but in this case, we can recognize it. It's a quadratic. So it's just a quick sketch. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And I want it within, the, uh, within our given domain. So it's going to go between 6 and negative 6. And it's going to go between 0 and 9. It doesn't need to be perfect. It looks like this. It goes through the origin. It didn't here, but it, it should do. And that's our sketch. So that's part C. Okay. Example 2. Slightly Same thing here. We're finding Cartesian equation, but slightly harder example because we've got Lunds involved. So I'm trying to get T equals for this part of the parametric equations. So I'm going to raise both sides uh, to the power of E, like so. Now the E and the ln cancel out, so I'm left with E to the x equals T plus 3. So T is equal to E to the x minus 3. And I'm now going to substitute that into the Y part of the parametric equation. So this gives me 1 over e to the x 
plus 2. Now, our domain for t is important here because it, it tells me what x can be. Now, let's look at the boundary first of all. If t is minus 2, what is x? So if t equals minus 2, x equals learn minus 2 plus 3 is just 1. Now learn 1 is 0. So the smallest that x can be is 0. So x is greater than 0 for this domain of t. So that's part A answered. Let me get rid of that. Okay, part B, write down the range of f of x. So I'm looking for y. Uh, what can y go between? Now, if x is greater than 0, that means, and again, there's, there's two answers here. So there's two ways to do it is what I mean. There's only one answer. Um, if t is greater than negative 2, then what's y going to be? Now, when it's negative 2, it's a third. So that's going to be a boundary. Is it going to be the lower bound or the upper bound? Well, let's have a look. Well, when t is 0, say, we get a fifth. Now, 0 is bigger than negative 2 within the ranges of t. So actually, it's between 0 and a third. Because as t gets bigger, y is just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. There's no t here. That makes y less than 0 or bigger than a third for when t is greater than negative 2. So this is our range. So this is our part B. And this is our answer to part A. Moving on to the next question. Okay. A curve has parametric equations x equals sine t plus 2, y equals cos t negative 3 or subtract 3 for all of t in the real numbers. Okay, show that the Cartesian equation is that. Now, hopefully we recognize straight away that that's an equation of a circle. Um, it doesn't actually help us that much here, but hopefully we can look at that and see that it is an equation of a circle. Now, we're using trig identities here, so this is something slightly different than we've done so far. Um, and actually, we're going to use the trig identity sine squared t plus cos squared t equals 1. Now, how are we going to use this? Well, I'm going to rearrange x to give me sine t equals. So x minus 2 equals sine t. And I'm going to rearrange y. x plus 3 equals cos t. And now I'm going to square those two things and I'm going to put them into there. So let's do this. So we're going to get x minus 2 squared, that's coming from here, plus y plus 3 squared, that's coming from here. I'm just squaring these ones because it's cos squared and sine squared. And that equals 1. Now, that's what I was trying to get. So that's part A done. And now, sketch the curve. So hopefully, this is not really anything to do with parametric equations. But this has a center 2, negative 3, and a radius of 1. So radius, uh, sorry, 2, negative 3 is about there. Radius of 1, it's not going to touch any axes. That's what it looks like. Just a quick sketch. On to our next question. So, a curve is defined by parametric equations. x equals sine t, y equals sine 2t, where t is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Find the Carte uh, Cartesian equation of the curve in the form y equals f of x. Stating the constant value k. Okay, so we're going to be using a different trig identity this time. Uh, so we should be looking th looking at this and thinking, right, I know what that equals. So I'm going to change uh, sine 2t into 2 sine t cos t. 
Now, I know what sine t is. Sine t is x. So I can write this as 2x cos t. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. What does cos t equal? Well, we know that cos squared t plus sine squared t equals 1. So that means cos squared t equals 1 minus sine squared t. So that means cos t equals the square root of 1 minus sine squared t. Now I know what sine t is. So this is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Because as it says here, x equals sine t. So going back up here on the right hand side, I can change cos t to the root of 1 minus x squared. And that's our Cartesian equation for y equals f of x. But now I need to find what x can go between. Now again, there's two ways to do it. I can look at uh, this, or I can look at this. So if I'm gonna look at the parametric equation, what does x go between? What does sine t go between? No matter what t is in this range, the absolute biggest it can be is 1. The absolute smallest it can be is negative 1. That's just knowing that the sine graph goes between 1 and negative 1. So that is the answer. Uh, it does actually include 1 and negative 1 because these are inclusive. The other way to do it is looking at this. Where, where does uh, this function break? And it's square rooting... I can't square root a negative number. So I'm looking at this x squared. x squared is always positive. Can't be negative. So it's got to be between 1 and negative 1. Because if it was outside that range, then this square root would be negative. So there's two ways to do it. But this is the domain uh, of uh, the Cartesian equation. So part B, what is the range? Again, we're looking at y and of the parametric equations and what does sine t uh, sine 2t go between well just because it's 2t it still goes between negative 1 and 1 so our range is just that i hope that makes sense it's one of those things where you need to use your maths intuition there's no way to work it out knowing that sine 2t goes between 1 and negative 1 is the key to answering that question okay Next question. Curve C has parametric equations x equals cot t plus 2, y equals cos x squared t negative two, uh, subtract 2 between two, uh, t is 0 and pi. Uh, okay. Find the equation of the curve in the form y equals f of x and say the domain of x for which the curve is defined. Hence, sketch the curve. Okay. Well, we're going to use an identity here, which a lot of us might not instantly recognize or use. But before I do that, I'm going to rearrange this to get, not cos, cot. Cot t equals x minus 2. And I'm going to rearrange y to get cosec squared t equals y plus 2. Now I'm going to use the identity 1 plus cot squared t equals cosec squared t. Now this just comes from uh, the sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. If you times everything, or you divide everything I should say, by sine squared, then you, you end up getting this. So if you divide, I mean, let, let me show you quickly. If you get sine squared t plus cos squared t equals 1, hopefully we will know this. If we divide everything by sine squared t, I end up getting this one on the left. So if you don't know this identity on the left, 
learn it because it, it can really help. Now, now we're going to substitute in our parametric equations. So that's x minus 2 squared. And this is y plus 2. I don't need to square it because it's already squared. Correct. Okay. Now I need to get y equals. So I'm going to expand this bracket. Take the 2 to the other side. So I end up getting y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. Great. So that is my Cartesian equation. Uh, domain for x. So what does cot t plus 2 go between? So cot t is 1 over tan. So I'm pretty sure x is all real numbers because t is all... Oh no, t is not all real numbers. t is between 0 and pi. Let's actually do this properly. So... If I'm looking at this, what does this go between? Now, cot t can go between anything because tan on the y-axis goes to infinity and negative infinity. So, uh, therefore, x can be anything. I was originally right. So, x is in all real numbers. Part b, sketch the curve. Okay, well, it's just a quadratic. So, does it factorise? Negative 3, negative 1. Yes, it does. So, that's nice and easy. Taking us back to GCSE Maths. One, three, three. That's our sketch. Okay, so it says draw the curve given by the parametric equations here. Now, the thing with this is the Cartesian equation might not be uh, very easy for us to sketch. It might not be something that we've seen before. So actually, we need to do plotting. So we need to choose t at regular intervals between 0 and 2 pi. And I need to get what x and y are and then I'm going to plot on an x, y plane. So let's start with t is 0. Then let's do pi over 4, pi over 2, 3, pi over 4, pi, 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, 2 pi. Now, that's quite extensive. Uh, you definitely don't need to do more regular intervals than that. Uh, but we need to get a good idea of what's going on. So x is given here. So I'm going to substitute these t's into there to get my x. So when I do that, and I'm just going to quickly write it down, this is what you get. And we're going to plot these points properly. In the exam, you'll be given proper graph paper so you can plot it accurately. But this is what you get when you substitute in those t's into your x parametric equation. Then you do the same for your y parametric equation, and this is what you get. If you're getting different numbers here, maybe check that your calculator is in the correct unit. That's not correct. I've copied it out wrong. There we go. And now we're going to plot these x, y coordinates. So our first coordinate is going to be, let me just give you a rough idea. Mm, maybe I should have split that out more, but that's okay. Because I'm just showing you a rough idea of what it's like and how you do it. Okay, great. So my first point is seven zero. So let's plot seven zero. Next point is six point one two one point four. So that's gonna be about there. 
next point is 4, 2, next point is 1.88, 1 1.41, 1 so that's going to be about there. Then it's going to be 1, 0, then it's going to be uh, 1 point, so in line with that, and negative 4.1, so it's symmetrical. Then it's going to be 4, negative 2, then it's going to be 6.12, negative 4.1, again, so it's symmetrical. So it's like this ellipse. I mean, excuse the horrendous freehand on the iPad. That's just impossible. I'm not even going to... No, I'll give it one more attempt. Let's give it a go. That's a little bit better. Okay, that's your sketch. That's all you need to do. You choose your different intervals for T. You substitute them into your two different parametric equations. And then you plot. You'll be given proper graph paper. Okay, next question. So we need to know how to find the various intersection points. And as you can see, this Cartesian equation is clearly something that we've not really seen before because it backs up onto itself. And that's the only, at this level, That's you can only really get that from parametric equations. So the diagram shows curve C with parametric equations, uh, X equals A T squared plus T and Y equals A brackets T cubed plus eight where t is all the real numbers, and a is a non-zero constant. Given that c passes through the point negative 4, 0, find the value of a. Okay, so that shouldn't be too difficult, because we've got a uh, variety of uh, points there. So what we've got to do is we know that x is minus 4, when y is zero. So it's got the same t. So let's substitute in those two things into our parametric equations. And we basically need to solve this for t and a. Now, I'm gonna look at this right one first because I can find t straight away by dividing by a, so I get t cubed is equal to negative 8, so t is equal to negative 2. So substituting negative 2 into my t on the left hand side, I get negative 4 equals 4a, subtract 2, add 2 to both sides, divide by 4, I get negative a half equals a. So that is part a done. Part b, find the coordinates of a and b where the curve crosses the y-axis. So where the curve crosses the uh, y-axis, that's where x equals 0. So I'm going to, I want to solve, don't forget that a equals negative a half. I want to solve this for t. Now, we're going to get two answers, as we would expect, because we've got two points. So I'm going to take a t out here, and I'm going to be left with negative a half t plus 1. So either t equals 0, or t equals 2. So now we substitute those into our y. So substituting these two, I'm just going to move up here. Negative a half, because that's what a is. And I'm doing 0 cubed plus 8. Well, that's going to give me y equals negative 4. And then we do the same when we substitute in 2. And that's going to give me uh, negative 8. So A and B is, so A is going to be the one with the smaller number, so it's going to be 0, negative 4, and B is going to be 0, negative 8. Okay, moving on to the next question. Okay, again, intersection points. The diagram shows a curve with parametric equations, x equals cos t plus sine t, y equals 
t minus pi over 6 all squared for that domain of t. Find the point where the curve intersects the line y equals pi squared. So we're going to substitute in pi squared into y like so. Square root both sides. So t is equal to pi plus pi over 6, which is 7 pi over 6. So that's the t value. I want the coordinate. So all coordinates. Ah, when you square root, you get plus or minus. So it's 7 pi over 6, or negative 5 over, or negative 5 pi over 6. So you get two answers. Be careful. And at, you would expect that, right? Because y equals, no, that's wrong. y equals pi squared is, is going to be something like that. So it crosses it twice. Are these t's in our range? And the answer is yes, I think, but let me check. So this one is, so it's not in the range, so I'm going to reject that one. But it's important that we found it. So therefore, t is equal to 7 pi over 6. So then, I need to find the point of intersection by substituting it into my x and my y. So when I substitute 7 pi over 6 into cos and sine, I end up getting x equals negative 1, negative 3, root 3, sorry, over 2. That's my x. When I substitute it into my y, I get pi squared. Okay, so my coordinate, my point of intersection with that line is negative 1, negative 3 over 2 pi squared. Okay, that's part A. Part B, find the coordinates of the points A and B where it covers, cuts the y-axis. Again, so I want to solve when x is 0, cos t plus sine t. This is what I'm trying to solve. Okay, now let me take uh, cos onto the other side. Some of you might be tempted here to divide by cos t. Now, that's fine, but make sure that cos t equals 0 isn't an answer. Now it's not an answer here, so I get tan on the left and negative 1 on the right. Because if it was an answer, then I'd be dividing by 0. Now, because it's in this range, cos is not actually 0 in that range. So therefore, I'm allowed to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to solve this for t. And when I type that into the calculator in our range, I get this. If you're not sure how to solve trig identities, uh, sorry, trig equations, I'll put a link up to my video of doing trig identities. Sorry, not trig identities, trig equations. What am I talking about? Uh, so the two answers here are this. I should be drawing a graph, but I'm doing it quickly because I'm assuming you know how to solve this. Okay, so now I'm substituting that back or these two back into uh, my y's. So let's start with negative pi over 4. And I'm putting that into here. And when I do that, I get y equals 25 pi squared over 144. And when I substitute in 3 pi over 4, I get y equals 49 
pi squared over 144. Lovely square numbers. So A is 0, 25 pi squared over 144. And B is 0, 49 pi squared over 144. And that's my answers. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Now this part of the video, we're going to be talking about differentiating and integrating parametric equations. Now, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. If you haven't learned the chain rule yet, don't worry. But I'm just going to show you how I'm going to eliminate uh, t. So I can find dx and dt by dt. That's just differentiating this. I can find, I'm not actually going to write that there. I can find dx dt. And I can find dy dt. Now, how am I going to get this in such a way that the dt's cancel? Well, I want dy by dt. And I want to times by dt by dx. Because when everything cancels out, I'm left with dy dx. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, I don't have dt by dx. I've got dx by dt. So what can I do instead of timesing by dt by dx? I can divide by dx dt. Because the way I divide fractions is I've got to flip it and change it to a times. So this, and it's so important this, is how you differentiate parametric equations. I've just I've just given you that using the chain rule. A lot of teachers will just give you that and not explain why, but this is how you do it. Okay, so let's find dx dt. So I'm differentiating the x parametric equation with respect to t. So that's gonna give me three t squared plus one. Let's find dy dt. And that gives me 2t done. Okay, so now I need to divide dy by dt by dx by dt. So that means dy by dx is equal to 2t over 3t squared plus 1. Perfect. So now I need to find the gradient at the point P where t equals 2. So I'm substituting in 2. So I get 4 on the top and 13 on the bottom. 4 over 13. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so find the equation of the normal at point P where theta equals pi over 6 to the curve with the parametric equations x equals 3 sine theta and y equals 5 cos theta. Okay, so I need to find... Uh, dy by dx, which is dy, that's horrendous, dy by dt divided by dx dt. So dy by dt is negative 5 sine theta and dx dt is equal to 3 cos theta. So now I'm going to divide those two to get dy by dx. So I get negative 5 over 3 sine over cos gives me tan. Okay, so now I'm going to put uh, my uh, values in pi over, pi, uh, pi over 6 and when I put in pi over 6 into that I will get annoyingly my calculator is in the wrong setting but it is in now the right setting I get negative 5 
three root three. So when you type that into your calculator, you get negative 5 root 3 over 9. So that is your gradient of your tangent. So then to get the gradient of the normal, you need to do the negative reciprocal. So it would be 9 over 5 root 3. This is m of normal, the gradient of the normal. Now I want the equation. So let me just uh, tidy that up. And that gives you, when you rationalize the denominator, root 3, 3 root 3 over 5. OK, so that's my gradient. And it says, um, when I substitute pi over 6 into um, x, that tells me what my x and y are. So at p, and I'm substituting in uh, theta, uh, theta equals pi over 6, uh, my x-coordinate and y-coordinate are 3 over 2 and 5 root 3 over 2. And now I need to substitute this into, I'm just going to go up here, y equals mx plus c. I know what m is. It is this, so I get 5 root 3 over 2 equals 3 root 3 over 5 x plus 3 over 2. Now when I tidy that all up, my equation is 5y equals 3 root 3 x plus 8 root 3. Okay, so this is how to integrate, because we're trying to find an area, how to integrate parametric equations. Now, the way you do it is y dx dt dt. Integrating that. So I'm going to do it in terms of t. So this is the formula you need to remember. Now your limits are going to be in terms of t. So this is going to be t1, t2. If you don't know this or why this is, you need to learn it. Okay. Um, this is basically because this cancels out and when I'm integrating it, I'm basically just integrating y with respect to x anyway. Um, so we're using the bit of the chain rule to make this work and so I don't have to change all the variables. So learn this, it's important. So I need to find dx dt. So when I'm differentiating that, I need to expand the bracket so that's going to give me t plus t squared. When I differentiate that, I get 1 plus 2t. Okay, I know what y is. It's told me. So I'm integrating, and I'm going to leave the limits for now. 1 plus 2t over 1 plus t. For t, well, in, with respect to t, for t is greater than or equal to 0. Now, my limits in terms of x are 2 are 2 and 0. So I need to solve the x parametric equation when x is 2 and x is 0. So let's start with 0. So when I solve this I get t equals 0 and t equals negative 1. Now t has got to be greater than 0. It says it there. So I can't have negative 1 so I'm going to reject it. Now let's solve it when x is 2 I'm just going to expand it because I'm going to get a quadratic. And when I solve that, I get t equals 1 and t equals negative 2. So I can't have negative 2, same reason as before. So my limits are 1 and 0. Okay, how do I integrate this? 
Well, I need to split the fractions into partial fractions. If you're not sure how to do this, I will leave a link in the description on how to integrate with partial fractions. Uh, when you do partial fractions, this is what you get. So I can actually split this up like this to make it easier for myself. So this will give me 2t minus ln 1 plus t in modulus between 1 and 0. So when you substitute in 1, I get 2 times 1 minus ln 2. That's it. When I substitute in 1. When I substitute in 0, I get 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Minus ln 1, which is 0. So I get 2 minus ln 2 as my answer. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. I really hope this helped you with your parametric equations. As always, if it added value, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next video.